Hi there. Today we're going to look at auditing radicalization pathways on YouTube by Manuel Horta Ribeiro et al. Uh, so this paper is a bit different than the one we're usually looking at, but since I'm a YouTuber and this is in the kind of a data science realm, I thought it fits neatly. So um, <laughs> yeah, we'll have a look. And this is mostly going to be an analysis and my opinion on it. So, you know, take that for what it is. Um, this is, in my opinion, a paper where you can see very well what what it looks like when you deceive yourself. So when you f have a hypothesis of something and then only collect data that matches that and you don't think like you don't think of simpler solutions for that explain the data and therefore you don't think of experiments that could differentiate the simple solutions from what you propose uh, so it's a good example of how you can kind of trick yourself into believing you found something and this isn't this isn't now about YouTube or anything this happened to me so many times um, it always pays off to to take a step back and say is there a simpler explanation for what's happening and this is what I think is exactly happening here so I'll present to you their hypothesis and then I'll present to you my kind of what I think is going on and a model that explains the data much 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 easier and simpler and actually better um, so Let's, let's dive in. Um, the, this paper basically claims the following. So on YouTube, there are channels. And channels are, you know, independent channels. They make videos. And you can actually arrange these channels. So each dot here is a channel. You can arrange these channels in kind of a, a network. And two channels, you can claim they're connected and there can be a connection strength or whatever. But for simplicity, they can be connected if, for example, their topics are similar, if they reference each other, if they are recommended by YouTube from each other, if they have the same users watching those same channels or the videos of these channels. Uh, there are a number of metrics where it could, um, you could, you could make channels connected, but all of them will turn out uh, similar, like we'll give you the similar structure of channels being connected. Oh, that's connected twice. Um, <laughs> so, so, so you can kind of build a graph of how these channels are connected. And what you can do then is you can, you can cluster them. Uh, you don't have to build a graph to cluster them, but you, you can cluster the channels and what will emerge are parts of the graph that are very well connected. Um, right here, this might be connected with this and with this, uh, parts of the graph that are very well connected and are kind of within, um, well connected within and more sparsely connected to, to others, like also have a, a larger distance in between uh, them. So if you start out from one channel and you're kind of watching recommended videos and recommended channels and so on, you'll, you'll stroll along here, uh, you will get much faster to these things than to the other things. So these these are called uh, communities usually in these kind of net social network analysis. So on YouTube, you know, there is a community for makeup. There's a community for sports. Uh, in, within sports, there is a community for soccer. There's one for basketball and so on. So th these are all these kind of communities that you can discover by clustering. Uh, this paper mainly deals with three communities. Namely, the first of all is the, the IDW, which is the Intellectual Dark Web. They discuss this here. Uh, so the Intellectual Dark Web is, they describe as a, um, a, a group of individuals that are in a rolling conversation with each other about topics that are, let's say, usually kind of difficult to, to talk about, such as uh, gender differences or intelligence research in certain areas or even you know regular politics but um kind of the the intellectual dark web are a wide variety of people that basically are are conversing with each other about 
topics. It's <laughs> the, the description is a bit um, vague, but the, the main aspect is conversation and maybe topics that are you know, kind of on the on the edge of, of what's acceptable to talk about. Um, but the opinions range widely on these topics. The second group is the alt-right. And the alt-right here is kind of the... the um, they're, they're defined as ethno-nationalists. Um, for example, here is an example, the, the fringe ideas such as a white ethno-state, um, white supremacist ideology, and so on. So specifically, ethno-nationalists, na nationalists that, that think nations should be organized too, uh, along the lines of ethnicity. And the, the goal of the paper is actually to to um, show that there is a kind of a dangerous pipeline on YouTube that will drive people to the alt-right and drive people into these radical ideas of the alt-right. Um, kind of in between is the alt-light, which is here defined as civic nationalists, which is simply, as I understand it, means that people should be organized into nations uh, not along ethnicity, but just should organize themselves into sovereign communities. And um, uh, it would be more of your libertarian, uh, classically liberal uh, people, whereas the, the alt-right would be more of your, let's say, authoritarian right, uh, right-wing person. Um, so these three communities, they have a fourth community, which is a they call a control group, and the control group consists of what they say are kind of mainstream channels on YouTube, simply to um, differentiate them from these three and to see what's going on with them and if there is a difference. Uh, so this is this is kind of the, the setup, and as I said, the hypothesis is the following. People go on YouTube, so YouTube is here, YouTube, people come on YouTube. They go around, right? They they explore a bit, and all of a sudden they find IDW videos. And these are recommended by YouTube on a fairly regular basis, right? I mean, I mean, they're interesting. People find it, they find it interesting, and so on. And then there, from the IDW, there are recommendations and links to the alt light. And the alt light are still so as as I read this paper, um, there is kind of a an undertone, kind of the IDW and the alt light are still okay like they, they are they discuss ideas that are you know sometimes political and so on but the real the worry is the, the alt-right the kind of radical right-wing um ethnic nationalists um and i mean yes it, it, the the formulation i can i can agree with um and then they claim so you, you find the idw that they have links to the alt-light or links, I mean, recommendations and so on. And from the alt-light and to a certain degree also from the IDW, you can then find the alt-right. So even though a user that goes on YouTube at first isn't likely to find the, the alt-right videos because um, yeah, it's fringe, it's extreme and so on, by through the YouTube recommendation algorithm, basically, by going to the IDW finding this, then from there they'll find the alt light, and from there, and from the IDW they will then find the alt right. So they claim that there is this pathway of radicalization here that kind of pushes people towards the alt right, and um, that's their their hypothesis. And uh, th th they claim that they have evidence to support this. And I claim that there uh, is a simpler solution, namely. So first of all, let me state, I don't like the alt-right. I think their ideas are despicable. Um, I th that should go without saying, um, though I have said it now, so, you know. <laughs> Just as a disclaimer, I'm not defending anyone here. I'm simply saying this paper has a simpler explanation for their data. Namely, what I think is happening here is YouTube, again, is a channels. Each dot here is a channel. Channels can be clustered as such, right? They're 
as we saw before, I'm just drawing more of them right now. Blah, 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 channels, 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 channels. Um, so what I think is happening is there is a control group, what they call the control group. It's over here, it's large control, right? It's a bunch of channels. Then, which is kind of mainstream media. Then over here, there is, let's say, alternative media, where all of these three groups belong into. So at some point, you will have the IDW. Then maybe a bit further away from the control group, but very close to the IDW, you would have the alt light. And very close to the two, maybe here, you would have the alt right, right? But so notably, the in, in my model, the IDW and the alt light are kind of close together. Um, they are in terms of comparative distance. So if you cluster these channels by, let's say, audience or topics or and so on, it will, it will turn out that all of these three are far, far away from the control group. Those two are very close to each other. And then there, here there is some distance, but how much, you know, how much distance it is a question, but of, of course it's going to be smaller distance than the distance to the control group here. Um, I mean, I could, I could draw the alt right. Maybe a more accurate picture would be something like this alt right here so th whatever i mean it doesn't it doesn't matter the the details but the distance here is smaller than the distance to the control group right and um in in this model a second thing is also important namely the alt right as you can see here is much much smaller than the idw and the alt light and these again are much smaller than the control group and this i think accounts for most th so the distance relation between these and the um the size of the chan of the clusters account for most so that with size i mean mainly channel number of channels and also audience uh, this accounts for most or most of the data better than their model. So just keep this in mind, right? Um, and my model, of course, doesn't include any kind of pipeline uh, that they suggest. So first of all, they go ahead and they um, say, all right, we c they collect channels. So they collect data for this. And, you know, we could go over how they collect the data and criticize that and so on. They do human annotation and they start from already published reports and so on, which themselves can be criticized. I don't, I'm not going to go into their data collection methodology. It can have mistakes, but then any collection methodology can have mistakes. Um, what they end up with is a number of channels and here are the top channels from each category um, and you can as you can see alt right alt light intellectual dark web and control so already here you can see pretty clearly uh the model i have in mind namely and, and they acknowledge all of this by the way uh, look at the size of the alt right channels the biggest ones compared to the size of the alt light and the intellectual dark web. There's much, much smaller in number of views. And then compare this to the size of the control group. The control group, again, is again larger than the other two groups. Um, so just keep it in mind. Second thing to keep in mind, look at these channels. Maybe you know some of them. Joe Rogan, uh, Sargon of Akkad, um, of these, uh, Paul Joseph Watson, uh, Sticks Hexenhammer, these are YouTubers. Like these are individuals making YouTube clips, creating content for YouTube, um, being on this platform. Whereas if you compare it with the control group, what's here? Vox, GQ, Wired, um, Business Insider. These aren't YouTubers. These are, these are websites or traditional media companies or their, or their own kind of blogs and so on that have a YouTube channel where YouTube is one of the outlets of this media company. 
Um, so I think there's a there's a giant discrepancy here in the control group that can explain also some of this data that you see. Um, so keep that in mind. I think the control group, they say they don't try to capture the user dynamic with the control group, but I think that there's many problems with this control group, in, including the fact that these are these are kind of traditional mainstream media that just have YouTube as an outlet. And moreover, a lot of these like Vox or Vice, they are um, clickbait media and rage bait media that it has worked for a number of years, but it's the algorithms are becoming more attuned to kind of clickbait and these are crashing fast. Um, whereas the, the kind of more YouTuber people, they are, um, they're not susceptible to that much to kind of the, the abolishment of clickbait. All right, so these are, this is the data. They have all these channels, they have all these videos and they first of all give some, um, some, some stats on it. Here you see on the bottom is always the year. Uh, so they do this over time. And you see the active channels, which are channels that have uploaded videos in some time. Um, see the control group again is larger, but has started to flatten out in the last few years. Um, whereas the these communities, they are relatively flourishing. Um, another interesting point is that the paper somehow tries to tie this to the election of Donald Trump um, in uh, 2016. But I, again, I, I think this is just kind of in there to, to gain relevance. A lot of these kind of trends and so on, you'll see already start before that. Um, so in, in so the, the the start of the rise here, or if you see these these um, bumps here and so on, a lot of them start before 2016. So I don't know. as we go through this, make up your own mind of how much this is actually tied to the to the election or not. I think it's much more the years when um, kind of clickbait started to go down as a as a business model. Never mind though. So the active channels growing, though the control group not growing as much. Um, videos published, even though the control group isn't growing so much, they still publish the, the most videos. Um, but you can see generally the site is growing. Generally YouTube is growing. Like counts. And here you see something interesting starting to happen, namely these communities, especially the alt-light and the intellectual dark web, they're starting to catch up. And this is one of the things that the paper also states is that if you look at, for example, comments per video, this the, the alt-light and the intellectual dark web outperform the control group vastly, right? The, also, if you look at views per video, um, and likes per video, the the control group simply don't have an engaged audience, um, which I think, first of all, is because they produce clickbait. Second of all, they're just not that interesting. And third of all, they're not YouTubers. Like this isn't their thing. They're, they're just simply an outlet. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of a one, just kind of a bunch of metrics that the that they show here the next table is a bit more interesting in the next table they do a user intersection so what they do is they collect all these videos and then they collect all the comments of these videos and the comment of course always comes with a username you need to be logged into youtube to make a comment and they see which users comment on multiple videos or on videos of multiple categories. And then they can look at, aha, okay, if a user, how many users of category A also comment in category B and vice versa. So they have two metrics here, Jacquard similarity, which is for, for two communities, A and B, users commenting, number of users commenting on A and B divided by number of users commenting on A or B. 
and the second the overlap coefficient is number of users commenting on a and b divided by the minimum size of a and b uh, they say that the overlap coefficient is more useful to compare communities of different sizes so we'll look at that the top graphs are always um, always jacquard difference and the or jacquard similarity and the bottom one are overlap coefficient the first graphs though are number of commenting users per year and you already see that even though the control group has much more views and probably much more videos much larger the comments uh, don't they, so the again the the users of the all light and the intellectual dark web are much more engaged um, also comments per user this is the cumulative distribution function most people that comment on the um, on control group videos maybe comment once and then uh, but but the these other communities they, they comment more self similarity means year after year so always compared to the year before how many users are similar so how how well do these communities retain users and you can already see here the control group is actually very bad at retaining users it does have this overlap coefficient high but it has the jacquard sim self similarity low which basically if you think of the formula of the jacquard similarity means that the this number is small and this number is high um, which means that a and b are very disjoint um, which means that the last year's users aren't this year's users basically um, so they they constantly have to appeal to new users because they're losing old users because well i guess they're boring um whereas the alt light and intellectual dark web are much more are much better at retaining users um interestingly the alt right not as good as retaining users um as the other two this could also be an effect of size like if your community is smaller the users might wander away more quickly um, but I think this already speaks against the radicalization pipeline if the if the alt-right um, if YouTube was radicalizing people towards the alt-right um, we I think we would see a the alt-right being on top of uh, user retention then here they have intersections between communities so green here is alt light and idw while the blue is alt right and alt light and the other blue is alt right and idw so basically the green is alt light and idw and the blues are the other two and we see that the overlap in terms of overlap coefficient is similar uh, the overlap in terms of jacquard similarity uh, the alt light and the idw are very much more sharing users which in the picture i painted makes sense if you think my model is valid my model explains this very well in that these two communities are quite close together therefore share a similar user base the alt right smaller and a bit further apart therefore um, not as similar though more similar than the control group which is the last graph the last graph is sorry the last graph is how similar are these communities to the control group and here we see the idw and the alt light kind of similar um the alt right not as similar though in the overlap coefficient they're about the same um so th the the paper here claims oh look at look at the the similarity this is definitely a radicalization so they they don't claim yet this is a radicalization pipeline but they they claim that there's a higher similarity if you actually look at the numbers it's not it's not so I mean, here you're around the 50% uh, 
uh, similarity and here at the end you're also around the 50% similarity with the control group so this is within these groups and this is here with the control group um, also here you're if I look at the kind of mean here you're at whatever uh, 20 18 percent and here you're also you, you may be a bit lower but you're also going towards this what it looks to me like rather than there being a radicalization radicalization pattern if you look at the shape of this um, and kind of where it starts in 2013 2014 it starts to go up here and you look at the shape of this it's simply the same shape delayed and I mean, there's no reason why this graph wouldn't go up here um, wouldn't go up here in the future and reach the exact same numbers as here it seems that the graph is simply shifted which makes total sense if you think these communities um, are I'm going to draw the same picture here alt right IDW alt light and over here control if you think they're 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 like that if you th simply think well YouTube is growing users are growing users are starting somewhere here and then spreading out pretty much randomly like they're spreading out spreading out spreading out S users start here spreading out users start here spreading out here spreading out everywhere users are just diff kind of there's a diffusion process going on not in a particular direction like they claim if there is just a diffusion process going on what would you expect you would expect users that started here to reach the IDW and the alt right much sooner than they reach the control group. Uh, but ultimately, as the diffusion <laughs> continues, all users will have commented on most videos if you run YouTube infinitely, and these numbers would go. That's why the numbers go up, right? If you just let it go, the diffusion process will go along. And it simply takes a longer time to go from here all the way over here than it goes than between these communities. So th to me, uh, we're looking at a simple diffusion process here um, that is shifted in time. And that explains very much the discrepancy in number, but also the shape of the curve that is exactly the same, but shifted. Their model does not explain shape of the curve they simply say well here it's uh, 75 percent and here it's only 50 percent that means that these communities are kind of uh, shipping users towards each other um, so I think the explanation is easier then th so they claim this does not alone kind of show that there is a pipeline what they now do however will show that basically so they claim this is the experiment that really shows that there is uh, this pipeline so what they do is they define what they call an infection uh, so what they say is okay we are for example this this row here we're taking users that are alt light users at the beginning in this time so basically they only comment on um, they only comment on alt light videos during this time right so discard all users that comment on anything else just retain the ones that only comment on alt light videos during this time then we're going to follow them over time and see how many of them have at least one comment in an alt right video so this is only directed from the community over here towards the alt right and then they call a user infected um, specifically if they comment on one or two alt right videos they're lightly infected if they comment on three to five they're mildly infected and if they comment on more they're severely infected so um, as you can see users starting from the alt light um, or from the IDW or from both they will become in some will become infected over time namely uh, I, and I postulate we simply look at the since the, the tendencies between the groups are similar we'll simply look at the light infections here um, so they say okay 
after you know in 2018 about 8 to 10 percent of the users become infected in these groups you see here here about the same trajectories whereas um so whereas in the control group it's less here though honestly <laughs> i don't think it's that much less right i i think that again i i think there's a normal diffusion process here and they do this similarly with the with the other ones and to me like to them this makes total sense like oh yeah users that start in these communities they migrate they get infected by the alt-right they go towards the alt-right because you can find it so easily and to me this simply looks like a normal diffusion process here's what you need if you want and by the way the control group isn't that much different here's what you need if you want to show that there is a pipeline in this direction you need this exact same graph in the other direction and you need to show that people that started in the alt right do not go back in the same fashion towards the alt light or the idw and they do especially not go to the control group you need to show this basically between each pair of these and you need to show that the direction of infection is only in a single direction namely towards radicalization otherwise you're just looking at a normal diffusion process between differently distanced and differently sized groups um, so they go on to analyze and they say well how much basically how much of the alt-right audience makes is made up by people that have been radicalized that have been infected so that this infection is kind of their proxy for what they call a radicalization and um, if you become infected then uh, basically you're now part of the alt-right or something uh, even though you might have you might have commented something negative actually the you, you, you might engage with their ideas and call them uh, their crap uh, but in any case you're now infected and they uh, ask themselves how much of the alt-right audience has are of these infected so basically how much of the alt-right audience have are people that in the past have been not alt-riders have been exclusively commenting on alt-light or idw videos and they find that um for example for alt-light 23 percent of the alt-right audience are f former alt-lighters and have are former alt-lighters that have now made one comment on an alt-right video so that their claim is well there is a sizable portion of the alt-right that at the beginning wasn't alt-right that basically became infected and therefore that that kind of shows this radicalization pipeline that, that the alt-right audience is mainly consistent of people that um have not been alt-right previously uh, but have become so and to me again this is simply a function of the size of these communities right if if you think of this again and you start randomly somewhere on youtube let's let's make this assumption people start randomly somewhere on youtube what's the probability that you're going to start in the alt right very small right so what's the the kind of natural let's say the natural um size of alt right before users go and migrate is very tiny right so not many users are going to be uh, what, what you would consider originally alt writers wherever they're their first comment basically what this thing measures is where is your first comment and are any of your subsequent comments alt right if your first comment is not in the alt right then you become a potential candidate for infection and if any comment is on the alt-right then you're infected so what's the probability that your first comment is not alt-right well you're gonna land somewhere on youtube youtube is huge the alt-right is very small thus that probability is extremely small and then 
you let you simply let people diffuse let them diffuse let them diffuse some will end up in the alt right and since the alt right is so small to begin with actually most people that will comment at some point on an alt right video will uh, will have their first comment from somewhere outside the uh, the, the alt right videos um simply simply a numbers game right simply the alt right is so small that this is virtually guaranteed so what they find here is again simply an evidence of a regular diffusion process between these differently sized groups and uh, the claims they make from this are just over the top again the, their their comparison to the control group if you if you look at the numbers they're actually not that different from this from the idw um numbers they're they're different than the alt light uh, here substantially different but again that simply a function of distance in my opinion in these in these clusters um lastly they look at the youtube recommender system and they say okay if we look at these videos and the channels and we look at on these videos what other videos are recommended and what other channels are recommended so if you have like a video on youtube you have the video here and here you have like recommended videos so similarly when you have a channel right you have a channel this is a person yay i'm this person the person can have first of all they can have featured channels where they say look these are channels that i find cool i go check them out and then they also have recommended channels that are kind of given by youtube as recommendations so here youtube controls basically everything here the creator controls part and the, the uh, youtube controls the other part so they, they look to both first of all the channels uh channels recommend recommendation so these are both sections here and they look at if you start on a alt light video how likely if you do a random walk are you to end up in the alt right or in the intellectual dark web or control group after one step two steps three steps four steps so the the, the, the big line is the random walker and actually the dashed line is the distance if you were to targetly go into the direction of such a video like what's the minimum number of clicks you need um, and you can see here the the um, if you start at alt light after one or two steps the random walker is kind of a two percent chance to end up at an alt right video and uh, about a 25 percent chance here of ending up in a intellectual dark web video and about a 50 percent chance of ending up again at an alt light video uh, the scales here are really different so it's it's very difficult to judge um how it compares to the control group which is kind of at zero here um but to me again this is a reflection of the size of these communities and i i think it's a bit you know weird to to then claim oh these are reachable basically so two percent chance of landing on an alt-right video um i'm not sure but again if you compare if you start from the control group there's almost no chance you'll end up in a alt-right video so i guess the the comparison is is okay if you compare to control group um if you start look at videos however again if you start at alt light after one step you are approximately 25 percent likely to be in an idw video you're a bit over 50 percent likely to stay in an alt light video however compare this to channels you're almost super unlikely to end at a control channel if you start at an alt light channel but in video recommendations you're actually also about 25 percent chance of ending in a control group video where as look at the scale here you're only about 0.03 percent likely 
to uh, end up in an alt right video um, and also here so here even look at this if you start an IDW video the chance that you're going to end up in a control again super high um, much higher um, than an alt light video whereas with the channel recommendations this was completely turned around so we see the alt right completely loses when it comes to video recommendations and mainly the control group gains compared to the channel recommendations I think here's what I think I think this is due to this section here this section here where the creators have power and also this section here YouTube recommending I think they're putting a lot of work into the video recommendations I think they're putting not that much work into these recommendations and by work I mean actually manually intervening and deciding what's kind of good videos and bad videos and the the control group they're probably uh, there's probably big advertisement money in that um, so they might be pushed up a bit in the video recommendations since most people are going by video recommendations I, I, I've actually never used the channel recommendations feature and the channel recommendations first of all the creator has power over part of it and then also YouTube maybe not put as much work into these related channels uh, so both have in the effect that I would say the, the data here uh, first of all it doesn't doesn't convince me of a radicalization pipeline it simply convinces me that some uh, communities are larger smaller and closer together um, but second of all that this down here if you forget about the alt-right for a moment yeah they're irrelevant um, <laughs> this down here actually compared to up here shows maybe a bit of evidence of an algorithmic promotion of these mainstream media uh, channels compared to how the communities are actually clustering which I think this this up here might be a much more accurate uh, picture so you know that's, that's just kind of a, a funky thing in the data um, yeah the, the alt right is irrelevant to this part because they're they're just too small um, so this is this is kind of my take on this um they then give recommendations and is this a pipeline and so on and i don't think so um you've now heard my idea and you've heard their idea uh decide for yourself but i think it's a good example of how if you are convinced of an underlying mechanism you're going to collect evidence in support of that mechanism and if you catch yourself doing that really really think isn't there an easier explanation for this all right that was it for me have fun